Hello, today I'm going to go over a three-part series video on how to do a reconciliation. I'm going to start from level one, which is the easiest, all the way to level three, which is more complex. A reconciliation is simply the exercise of tying two different sources of information together. And this is under the assumption that if two different sources align, then it is most likely that they're both correct. Now to go over this, we're going to go over an example where we are going to reconcile an invoice detail received from a vendor back to our internal company database. To go over this, let's first start with reviewing our license agreement. We've entered into a contract with SF Data Hub Inc., which we'll call SF, where we purchase the following products. First is an active license, where we're charged a fixed monthly license fee for $80 per level two license and $50 per level one license. Now the caveat is that accounts active within the beginning of the month is deemed active for that month. Now what this means is that if we are being billed for the month of January 31st, any account that was active as of Jan 1st will be deemed active for the month, even if we decided to deactivate it sometime in January. The other cost component is a data usage fee where we are being charged $2.5 per data usage hour that was consumed. We can see all the details within the usage hours provided by the vendor, where we can see each employee name that are active by their license tier and the amount of hours that they used in January. As a result, they have provided us this invoice where we have 60 level two licenses, 167 level one licenses, resulting into a total fixed monthly cost of 13,000. And we've also consumed roughly 18,000 hours of data usage resulting in roughly 45,000 in data usage cost. All in total, we have incurred the cost of around 58,000 for January. Now let's take a quick look at the internal company database. Now in our company database, we have a list of all the employees by their license tier and their status. This detail was pulled as of January 1st. And this is because again, if accounts are deemed active within the first day of the month, they're going to be active for the remainder of the month. So we pulled as of the first day of January. And we also have all the data usage hours that were consumed within January by the different types of licenses. Accordingly, all the licenses registered here should be deemed active on this sheet as well because you can't consume hours if it's an inactive account. Now for the reconciliation, we're going to reconcile the fixed license fee and the data usage hours. First, let's bring in the details from the invoice that we're going to reconcile against. The active licenses, we know that for level two, there were roughly 60. And then for level one, we know that there was 167. Now for the total monthly cost, we have 4,800. And then for level one, we have 8,350. So let's back calculate how much they charged us per license for January. To do this, we're simply going to divide the total cost by the active license. And we can see if we calculate the difference, they charged us correctly to what was stated within the contractual agreement. Now let's reconcile the active licenses and the total monthly cost. To acquire the active licenses, I am simply going to count ifs all the level two license tiers, license two, where their status was deemed active. And we have roughly 59. And to calculate the total monthly cost, I'm going to multiply the active licenses by the fixed monthly cost. Now I'm going to copy this down here and simply update the formula to capture license one and do the same thing, multiply fixed monthly cost by the active license, which gets us to 8,250. So to get our variance, we are going to simply subtract the information from our vendor invoice to our internal company database. And from the looks of it, it looks like we're being overcharged roughly $180 compared to our company database. And this is because we are reporting 59 level two active licenses, whereas the vendor is reporting 60, and then for level one, 165 versus 167. Now for data usage cost, 
I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring in information from the invoice. So again, a very quick way to do this is to simply open the formula that has a reference to a tab that you're trying to refer to, highlight it, and then press F5 and press OK. And then you can simply update the reference. So I need to update it to volume first and then the cost. So if we back calculate the hourly cost as well, we can see that we are being charged 2.5 per hour. So there is no rate variance. However, for monthly hours, I'm simply going to sum the total data usage hours incurred in January. And then to calculate the total monthly cost, I'm going to multiply hourly cost by monthly hours to get us to roughly 45,000. So then we can see that we are being overcharged by $13, not that big of an amount. And if we wanna see the total variance in the invoice, we can sum all the different types of differences to see that we're being overcharged by $193. We can also set up a materiality threshold. And first I'm going to set up a total where I'm going to sum F C to get to this amount. Maybe we can get rid of the total variance then. And then for materiality threshold, let's say if the invoice is within 1%, we don't really care. So if this 193, and we can set up something here called materiality. 193 divided by 58K gets us to 0.33%. And then set up a status if the materiality is greater than the materiality threshold here. Then I wanted to write investigate otherwise clear because 0.33 percent is under one percent we can see that this invoice is cleared because it's within materiality threshold and this is it for the reconciliation we're able to find the differences between the volumes the rates and the total dollar variance between our level two level one fixed monthly fee and also for our data usage however in this video i'm also going to show you a complex but the best way that I would reconcile on a per detail level. So what if the manager followed up and said, hey, I want to see which accounts are driving these variances and by how many hours. Then we're going to summarize that information within the discrepancy detail tab. The best way that I would show a reconciliation is to bring in information from both sources and then bring in information from each respective source to show the difference. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. A very manual way to do this is to simply filter for all active licenses and then filter for all the licenses from your vendor as well. And then highlight these and then remove duplicates. So I'm going to select all and then you have a unique list of licenses from your internal database and the vendor. And a way to automate this is to filter all the license IDs where the status is deemed active. And now it brings in a total list of active licenses within our internal database. Now I have to bring in information from the vendor database as well. So I'm going to vStack this against the list of licenses here. And then lastly, when I layer on a unique, it will get rid of all the duplicates. So every time you update information within this table or the vendor data, it will update automatically. And then simply to get the employee name, I'm going to X look up the license ID based on the employee name. But in the off chance that 
the vendor detail has an employee license ID that's not within our database, we can also use an if error, xlookup, b6, refer to this table, and then bring in employee name. Done. And now for the license status, I'm going to xlookup the license based on our internal database and then bring in the status from there. We can already see there are three headcounts that are deemed inactive. So for license status here, I'm just simply going to count ifs. Count ifs the license and if it equals one, I want it to deem active, otherwise inactive. So then if there's ever any license ID that's within our database that are deemed active but not in the vendor agreement, it will return inactive. So then lastly for the difference, if equals, if this is true, then we are good. Otherwise, um, discrepancy. And we can see that it returned a discrepancy for these three employees. And we're going to do the same thing for data usage hours. We're just going to sum ifs our data usage hours based on the employee ID here. And then for the SF data hub, I'm going to sum ifs the data usage hours here based on the employee ID. And difference, actually let's do, let's always do it like this. And if we just want to fully automate this, we can actually do minus. And we can see there are some differences. Th these ones are actually fine, but there's these employees driving a few differences here. So if we had to organize this information, I'm just going to format this into financial. And we had to provide our employer the discrepancy of license status and the data usage hours. We're then going to filter this again, where differences equals discrepancy. And it already brings us in. We can do X look up over here. And then Shin Financials, again, we're just going to update this range to column D and then column E. And if we give this to our employer, they can immediately see that these three licenses are different and exactly why they're different. And again, for the data usage hours as well, we're going to filter the licenses where the difference is not zero. And we're going to do the same thing here. X look up R and then sum ifs our internal database. And then sum ifs the vendor database. I guess we want to add a difference just to show the employer why we're off. So we can see that two of the employees actually underspent compared to what the vendor is reporting, whereas one employee overspent. This nets out to 5.35, which reconciles back to the monthly hours discrepancy that we have here. And this is how I would do a level one reconciliation exercise. Again, the discrepancy detail part is a bit more complicated. You don't necessarily have to go down this route. You just have to understand how we got to this page because this is ultimately what the employers will be looking for at this level of stage. You'll also find this Excel file available for download within the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to message me in the email provided in the description below. I hope this video helped and follow for more Excel tips.